everyone. Bridget Ayer here with All About the Grace, and I'm going to try to do something a little different today. I'm actually using a new Yeti microphone. I'm actually using a different software to record today, so I'm going to see how that works out. All right. Well, today's topic is on the power of invitation. I want to share a couple stories with you, and maybe this will give you an idea of what you can do in your discipleship efforts. Uh, I want to um, share two things before I get started. Uh, first of all, um, if you haven't gotten a copy of my book, my book is called Breaking New Ground. If you haven't gotten it, um, it's about discipleship using new media. And that's really what my mission is. And that's what this channel really is about. It's about using new media to evangelize and to share the faith. And there's so many ways to do that. But my book is available on Amazon, or you can get it by going to allaboutthegrace.com. And you can uh, find it there. You can click the link there, and that'll take you to Amazon to get it. Okay, on with our topic, the power of invitation. So I recently, I guess it was, I guess it was November of 2019, as you know, I um, host a radio show on Catholic Radio Indy, which is in the Indianapolis media market. And I interviewed one of the featured guests that was going to be at Seek 2019. Seek 2019 is a really, really large, like 20,000 plus college students, roughly, that attend the Fellowship of Catholic University Students um, organization. That's the their big conference every two years for lots of people. And it was in, in, in Indianapolis, and we did a live remote, Catholic Radio Indy did. And I interviewed Curtis Martin, who is the founder of FOCUS, Fellowship of Catholic University Students. And he had a new book out called Making Missionary Disciples. And as I was reading that book to prepare for the interview, I was reminded about a couple different times in my life, a couple pointed times in my life, where all I did was invite a friend to go to Mass with me, just a simple act of inviting. And two of these friends, and I'll tell you about these stories here real quick, <clears throat> but two of these friends, it really sparked something in them. And they, both of my friends at the time had been baptized Catholic, but they had not been confirmed in the church. So for whatever reason, they didn't get confirmed. And later on in adulthood, young adulthood, I invited them to go to mass with me. And, you know, 20, I guess maybe 20, 25 years later, which is, you know, now I'm still friends with these two people. And it's just amazing what God has done in their life. And at some point, I hope to interview both of them on the show. But um, I want to get back to the power of invitation. So that's what uh, really the missionary discipleship um, model that Jesus gave us really, um, and Curtis Martin puts it this way, when build, send. And as I was reading his book, Making Missionary Disciples, I mentioned that I was reminded about, I'm like, wow, that's exactly what I did when I invited these two friends of mine to go to mass with me. Just completely innocently, just, I was going to mass, you want to go. And but when I read the book, you know, 20, 20, 25 years later at this mission, making missionary disciples book, all I could think about was like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I did. And I wasn't even trying, you know, I mean, I wasn't really trying to make a missionary disciple. I just was inviting my friend to go to mass. But so basically the model here is winning. You, you want to, with winning, I guess you're really just winning your friend over to Christ. And in my mind, that can just really be an invitation. So I'm going to tell you my story. So I was working downtown in Indianapolis. I was working um, 
at the Indiana Senate on a media staff. And one of the one of my coworkers and friends, we would talk about issues all the time because you know we worked in a political media office, and so we were always talking about uh, political issues and and you know the, you know kind of the moral aspects of those. And we were we had a you know just a lunch hour, and I was heading out, and my friend Katie said, "Hey, uh, you want to go to lunch?" I'm like, "Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to mass first. But, you know, we can um, we can either go to the communion service or we can go to mass and then we'll still have time for lunch and just we'll grab something and we'll eat at the little park and then we'll get back here in time. So anyway, she's like, yeah, sure. So we went to mass, you know, no big deal. You know, she you know, she was Catholic. She had, you know, um, raised Catholic. So she kind of knew. But it had been a really long time. I think she'd been to mass like a while, at least, you know, a couple of years at least. And then we, it was just so innocent. And um, then, you know, she, you know, she gets started asking questions and I happen to know about the consistent life ethic as it relates to Catholic social teaching and, and how all life is important and all life is, um, has dignity. And I started applying those, that Catholic social teaching to political issues and, you know, issues that we were writing about, we were talking about, the, the state lawmakers were legislating about. And she's like, wow, this all makes so much sense. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway, shortly after that, you know, she wanted to go to RCIA and um, her husband, who had never been, um, did not grow up in any church, had never been baptized, he ended up um, joining RCIA as well. And then there was just multiple members of their family, their parents. It was just like <laughs> the biggest domino effect ever, like in a positive way. And I just, I can't believe how just all I did really, I mean, we were good friends and that's another part of a part of, you know, being a disciple and, making disciples is that you really have to have these authentic friendships. First, your own personal friendship with Jesus and your encounter with Jesus and your constant connection with him and discussion with him, which was prayer. And then having those intimate relationships with other people. And the focus model really only has like the, 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 the missionary missionaries, they're called only have like one or two close friends that they're actually discipling. And that's kind of how it worked for me too, when I'm you know, reflecting back. And so um, in that friendship, you are discipling that it's, it's the build phase, according to Curtis Martin of uh, focus, the build phase is where you really basically build them up and build a foundation or help them, you mentor them to build a foundation on Jesus and their relationship with Jesus. And I was actually doing that, but I wasn't, I mean, it wasn't necessarily as intentional as I probably would be now. But, you know, they just were, I was friends with them. They just asked questions and I just, shared what I knew, pointed them to resources, shared with them with what I was doing in my own faith life. And it, it just was completely miraculous what happened. I mean, it took me really by surprise. That was one situation. And then I have another situation where this is when I was in college and I lived in a dorm that was, I went to IU Bloomington and I went lived in a dorm, all girl dorm. And it was on Third Street, and there's there were two Catholic churches uh, on IU's campus. There was one that was kind of more like the families of the community in, in Bloomington. So it was kind of an older group of established families. And that was St. Charles uh, Barromeo on Third Street, just you know, kind of down the street from where our dorm was. And then there was another one up on, I think, like on Stadium Drive, which was like the other side of campus, but that was like, 
think it was St. Paul's. And that was like the scope mass. That was the mass where all the young people were. And um, it's called the scope mass because everyone's like scoping each other out, you know, at mass is pretty bad. But um, so that was the other place. But I, I really liked going to St. Charles because it was like closer and I, I just didn't really want to go by myself. So I'm living on the dorm, dorm floor and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm going to mass. Anybody want to go with me? And anybody Catholic looking to go to mass? And so one of my friends, um, Michelle, was like, yeah, yeah, I'll go with you. So I can't remember if we drove down there or if we walked. I can't remember. But I just remember we started just going to mass together. And something about going to mass there really sparked something in my friend, Michelle. And we didn't really ever talk about it, but year, and I'm still friends with her years later, you know, she told me about some things that happened to her when she went to mass. And, you know, later on, I mean, here again, she was another person who had grown up Catholic, but for, for whatever reason did not get confirmed. And she, Uh, later on, you know, we, you know, I, you know, I, you know, we continued to be friends at, at IU. We didn't really talk about God. You know, we went to mass together and then, you know, we both moved out of the dorm, moved, moved into other places, but we're, we, we maintained our friendship and we've maintained our friendship over all these years. And at some point, um, and I'll, I'll have her on to the show, talk about, about her kind of reversion to the, to the faith. And anyway, she ended up getting confirmed later on. And she also uh, is, you know, has been very active in ministry, been a very solid Catholic. So I just think it's really interesting, you know, 25 years later, basically, since, you know, these various invitations that I offer just to go to mass, very simple, how through that, through my own relationship with God, through my own just invitation to go to mass, just something really simple, how the Holy Spirit worked in their lives to bring them back to the Catholic church to get confirmed and to really not just punch their ticket by getting confirmed, but by really then embracing the, the he, Jesus basically and his church and to really start living out as a uh, Catholic and a missionary disciple. And it's really interesting. My, my friend, my friend, Katie, is so her story is so amazing too, because not only did her husband convert and I actually sponsored them in RCIA, but they went on, they, they were just newly married. They went on to have, I think six children and both of their, well, Katie's siblings, both of her siblings and their families came back to the church. Her parents came back to the church. And even, even some of her parents' friends came back to the church, all because of just one simple invitation of me just asking them, do you want to go to mass? And really, I just, I mean, I, Katie just said, Hey, you want to go to lunch? I'm like, well, I'm going to mass. You want to go with me? And then we'll go to lunch. Um, and then the other person, like, I just, uh, Michelle, I just like, no, nope. Hey, anyone want to go to mass with me? I'm going to mass. And I didn't really want to walk down there by myself. So I'm like, you know, you want to go with me. So kind of just real innocent, simple invitations to invite people to mass and, and, and look what, look what God did with that. So I guess the takeaway here is, are you, and this is a good reminder for me, when I read this book, um, Making Missionary Disciples by Curtis Martin a couple of years ago, it was such a great reminder. It's like, am I inviting people? Am I really, uh, am I really discipling anybody? I mean, I hope to be discipling, um, anybody who will listen on this channel or through Catholic radio or through my blog or any of my other um, venues, but am I really discipling people in my everyday life? And that's the question that I want you to ask yourself. There are so many things that we can invite people to. There are retreats at our parish. There's like a, just um, 
sometimes they're just a one a one night speaker or a Saturday speaker. There might be a mom's group. There might be a men's group. There might be youth group or a Christ Renews. It, or you know, there's so many plugins or a Bible study. There are so many things happening just at your parish that you can invite people to. So don't don't be afraid. I mean, the worst thing they can do is say no. But you'd be surprised how many people don't ever get invited to do anything as it relates to church. You know, as as it relates to no one no one invited me. I hear that a lot after I invite somebody, they're like, you're the first person that's invited me to do that. So as Catholics, we really need to get better at inviting people and then let the Holy Spirit do the rest. And in a, in addition to inviting people, one thing kind of before that, I think you really need to be living your faith and obviously we're all imperfect. You know, I'm, I mean, even though I try to live my faith, I don't do it perfectly well. I'm always trying to improve and that's okay. But I think just, just trying to live your faith and trying to have a prayer life and authentic relationship with the Lord and then having those authentic friendships and then inviting people. And then once you invite them, they might want to have a conversation about what they saw or what they heard or or just even in your own conversations. And then once they are kind of discipled, because you will kind of be discipling them possibly, or they might meet somebody else at the event that you invite them to, then they will go out. And that's kind of the model um, that Jesus established for discipleship. So I'm hoping that this audio was pretty good. I'm trying this new mic. Um, If you have not subscribed to my channel, I'd really love it if you would. I am almost up to 500 subscribers and I want to thank everybody for that's here. I hope you're getting something from this to grow in your, in your faith. And, um, want to say God bless and I will see you next time.